So this meme was recently posted in Honey Badger Radio in the official Facebook group, and I think that it is a great meme. I think it's excellent because really it draws a line between two different uh, sections of the intactivist community. Um, some of us are called intactivist, and what it refers to is the tendency of people with an intactivism to just go fucking berserker on people and to basically call them pieces of shit, say they're bad parents. Um, I've been telling people that I'm going to go fucking protest the funeral of their dead infant Westboro Baptist Church style because fuck them. Now, I think that this is the appropriate tactic. I think that this is exactly what the men's rights movement should be doing because these parents are not motivated by care or concern for their child. If that were the case, they would have looked it up. They, would, they wouldn't make this ignorant, retarded mistake. The fact that they make the mistake shows one of two things. Either they have this lack of empathy that allows them to engage in what is essentially human trafficking, what is essentially uh, consensually handing your baby over to someone who is far worse than Larry Nassar. You know, you either have that or you have just an extreme level of negligence to such a degree that it's actually endangering to the child's life. So, you know, somewhere between those two, you can even make a little spectrum. Maybe you're 50-50, 50% 50 negligent, 50% just completely fucking not having any empathy, whatever. You could be 50% of each. That That's that's the most charity I'm going to give to these regret parents who want to, like, make this argument that they got deceived by the medical industry or whatever. You can have that ground. You can make some kind of 50-50 argument and let us know how the doctors tricked you into doing something so awful. Like how you were either that evil or that stupid and precisely what degree you were each of those things. You can go ahead and have that moment with yourself and define it yourself if you think that's important or whatever. I don't really give a shit. I don't. What I give a shit about is that when I see people who state their intention to, to do this to their child, you know, there, there, there's one method where you maybe try and convince them, try to get them to step down. But there's a point where... You know, if it's very obvious that nothing you say is going to convince them, well, they're no longer somebody who could potentially be convinced. Instead, they're just someone to make an example of. And because we can't trust that parents will be motivated by care or compassion or empathy or love for their newborn sons, what we should instead trust is that they will react to social pressure. They will react to being perceived as a bad parent. They will react to being perceived as a failure. You know, when I went and protested circumcision, there was one woman who, um, you know, she seemed very surprised by the whole thing. And I opened by kind of explaining, yeah, it's damaging to the penis. It's not something you should do. You know, it's about as damaging as female genital mutilation, some forms of it. You know, and, and none of that seemed to really upset her. The, the, the idea that I'm explaining to her, you know, these are things that you did to your son that, that, that hurt him, that impacted none of that mattered. When I said, when parents hand their babies over, what these doctors are doing to them is worse than what Larry Nasser did. That pissed her off. Oh, oh, did that piss her off. Why? Because in that context, she sees herself as a parent who handed her child over to Larry Nassar. She, she doesn't see in the circumstance what's happening to her child, like the, the, the suffering of her child as a baby and, and potentially as an adult later on. That didn't matter. That did not register to her brain. What did register was this idea that she's a shitty parent because she made a fucking awful decision. And I guarantee you the reason that people deny it, the reason that people who should be regret parents don't, it's not because they're, they're denying it because they don't want to come to, to grasp the reality that they hurt their son or they hurt their child. It's because they don't want to take the social hit. They, they don't want to admit that they made an awful mistake and play that card and be that person. I legitimately do not believe it's because they have empathy for, for their male sons. I think that predominantly they see their male sons as human doings, as means to an end. And when you look at the larger context of men's rights issues, what else could you possibly conclude? What else could you possibly conclude? Because if these parents really truly do love their sons, but they just made this one horrible, awful mistake, well, how come they don't give a shit about boys in education? How come they don't give a shit about drugging them with ADHD meds? How come they don't give a shit about... <clears throat> 
about boys who are um, beaten up by girls or about domestic violence when it's perpetrated by women. How come they don't give a shit about the suicide rate and how ridiculously lopsided it is in terms of fucking men are the ones killing themselves? How come, insert issue here, they haven't fucking done anything about it. Some of these issues have been around as long as the women's movement has. Some of these have been perennial fucking issues the entire time, and fuck all has been done about it. So you tell me, you tell me with a straight face that this is the result of generations of parents who love their sons. I don't believe it. I believe that in the West, really globally, we just don't love our sons as much as we love our daughters. And if you think that what I'm saying is terrible, you know, all I'm doing is speaking the truth. And you know what? Sometimes the truth is a bitch. And the one thing that men just aren't willing to do is bitch. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what being a radical MRA means to me. I'm going to be the one who's bitching. I'm going to be the one who people call an SJW, who people call a radical, who say, oh, you're just as crazy as the feminist. Yeah, so fucking what? Because if the feminist issues were real, if the feminists had issues like this, they would be totally justified. I would totally be doing their shit. Fucking, fucking smearing vagina blood everywhere or whatever retarded thing they're doing. Like, if their issues were real, they would be justified. And basically, for every one fake rape culture that women have, men have three real ones. You know, we have genital mutilation on infants. We have prison rape, which is where that term originally came from. And then we have the culture of silence surrounding men who are raped by women. So based on that, I would estimate that, um, you know, if we're just, let's, let's just pretend that the feminist rape culture narrative is true. Okay, so women have one rape culture, men have three. So by that standard, men would have to be three times as ridiculous as SJWs are. We would have to see the craziest of stupid fucking radical feminism dialed up triple the times before we reach the same threshold, relatively speaking. So I say, fuck it, maybe we just dial it up to the same threshold they've been, and then we're, you know, we're still three times as reasonable. When I tell people what you did to your child is worse than having him raped as an adult, just like standard rape, as in like not knife rape where you're genitally mutilated, you know, th that's, these are facts, and, and, it, and it may come out as um, something that's very, very extreme, something very over the top, but you know what? Sometimes reality is over the top. Sometimes reality is fucking crazy, and basically the one thing that men have not been willing to do is bitch. So we need a bitch more. The men's rights movement needs to stop being in retreat. It needs to stop running away. You know, we have just a pile of one-move checkmates, and we should start acting like it. These arguments, like, the, 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 the statistical facts, um, how ridiculously lopsided it all is, that's what stands to condemn the gender conversation so far. You know, people can say anything they want. The, the, the bottom line is you look at reality, and my point here is that it's not a reality that supports the idea that we actually love and care and con are concerned with men and boys. So, you know, if anyone's offended by that, show don't tell. You know, I, I'm tired of seeing words that say, no, we do care, no, something is going to change. Uh, you know, what, what we need are results, right? That That's, it's meaningless if it never connects to the results, and the results are the true measurement. So recently, the SPLC finally went through with it and actually declared AVFM and I think Return of Kings, they declared them officially hate groups. They're male supremacist. Well, if you look at the claims they're making, they used all the same shit they tried to do the first time around. You know, they were going to do this regardless of what anyone did. This whole idea that, you know, the men's rights movement needs to watch how radical it is. It needs to put a lid on it. I, it's all bullshit. It's all just out there. They're going to say it no matter what. It's designed to suppress you because that's the only way that people can beat the men's movement is to silence them. That's the only way, because all of the facts are right. And really, a lot of people are just bewildered by how ridiculously lopsided it all is. But if you're out there and you say your piece and you don't have any apologies about it and state what you think to be the case, you know, without euphemisms, without sugarcoating the red pill, Sometimes, you know, that, that draws more people to consider it also. So that's why I'm going to continue with this approach. Um, and I defend other people who do approach things this way. And I think we need more people who are willing to basically 
stop being so fucking nice about it. Stop being so fucking nice about men's rights activism because, you know, there's nothing nice about reality. Reality is a bitch, and that means that telling the truth, you know, you, you got to be a bitch if you're going to tell it how it is. All right, thank you for listening. You guys have a good day.